Right then, pretty quick one today, but should be quite interesting. 3D printed cleats. I've got them inside this cupboard here. Um, and I've had these printed off for ages, actually. So let me get them out. So I've got the big three here in terms of cleats for road cycling. I've got the classic Shimano SPD SL cleats. I've got Look Keo, and I've got a bit of a wild card. These, these Time Expresso cleats here. I've been using time-based pedals for a little while now, actually, and I really like this cleat system. So I'm gonna be testing all three. Now I've got two sets of each print and that's basically because the top row were printed slightly differently to the bottom row. The top ones here were printed pretty much flat on the print bed or, or as flat as possible. Whereas uh, the second set were printed at a slight angle. So essentially the layer lines of, of the print will be different. It's just a bit of a contingency in case one set breaks, I've got something else to fall back on because I don't, I don't really know how these are gonna cope. It's also worth stating that the prints are 100% solid. There's no infill used on any of these. So they're, they, yeah, they're completely solid for kind of maximum durability. But let me show you quickly where I got these print files from. So I got them all from here, from, from Thingiverse. I'm sure those of you that have done 3D printing are well aware of this website. You can kind of share user-generated 3D print files. So just type in SPD cleats, two come up. I think it was this top one that I used actually. Then if you type in Look Keo, it was this one down here that I used for the Look Keo cleat. And finally, Cleats Time Expresso. There's only one here and it was that one. So yeah, they're all here on Thingiverse in case you wanna try this yourself. Now my main concern with these prints are with the bits that overhang. So when I pull up on the pedal, are we gonna see any delamination between the layers of the print? So I'm gonna put these on a pair of shoes and try them on the Turbo Trainer that I've got in the corner first. So let me get that set up. Now the prints do look quite solid, so I did consider just, you know, <laughs> throwing them on a pair of shoes and going outside, but I figured probably best to try them on the Turbo first. So the Turbo Trainer is all set up, and first up on the roster, I'm gonna put the Shimano SPD SL cleats through because I just think they're closest to the original, so they probably have the best chance of working. So I'm gonna get these 3D printed cleats put onto these set of shoes. So to give these the best chance of succeeding, I have used all the original hardware from Look or Shimano or whatever to get them attached to my shoes. Right, those went on pretty easily, actually. I will say the curvature of the cleat is a bit off. Hopefully you can see quite a big gap at the back there. But other than that, they went on fine, actually. So let's get on the bike and give these a go. So I've got my cycle gear on, courtesy of today's wonderful sponsor, Sirocco. Uh, yeah, link in the, in the description. So I've got these, uh, got these cleats on. Let's give them a go. Right, first clip in. Not particularly smooth. Let's try the other one. Oh, there's one. Oh, that one is not going in. Okay, we've got one, we've got one clipped in. The other one just doesn't want to go. 12 seconds later. Okay, right, so um, I unclipped and this happened. So yeah, that's, that's one cleat which has already failed. So maybe this is not a good idea. Um, okay, so that was the first set of cleats. They were made sort of flat on the print bed. I'm gonna try this, uh, this other set where they were kind of printed at a slight angle, but yeah, after that has happened, I'm not particularly, um, yeah, not particularly optimistic, but let's give it a go. In fact, I was, ju I was just undoing the bolts to swap over <laughs> to these other set of cleats and this one is completely knackered as well. So that one was about to suffer exactly the same fate. In fact, let me see if I can rip it off on camera. Yeah, look, it's just, it's failed exactly in the same manner, just on one of those, uh, the, the print layer lines. So yeah, and not great, but let's try these other ones. Okay, so I've put the other set of cleats on the shoes here. They seem a little bit steadier, but I'm pretty confident they're gonna meet exactly the same fate, but <laughs> let's give it a go. Right, first one to get clipped in. Oh, we're clipped in actually. Number two, there we go. Look at that. Working just as good as the real thing. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try pulling up. Oh, okay, not too bad. And the other one. Yeah, all right, actually. So let's try a few clip ins and outs. That's one, that's one, that's another. 
I mean, it's working. I can see little bits of plastic getting <laughs> shredded on the floor though, so. And they sound really crunchy. I already feel like they're deteriorating <laughs> underneath me. Uh, okay, let me get off the bike and have a quick look at the underneath. Okay, so they may have seemed okay while I was on the turbo, but you can see they've been completely, <laughs> completely shredded. They haven't delaminated in quite the same way and they've been a bit more robust, but even after like two minutes on the turbo trainer, you can see that the layers are still separating. I had a feeling these overhangs would cause some issues. Uh, and if I show you that other cleat, I suspect it's pretty much the same deal. Yeah, so not quite as bad, but yeah, it's it's definitely not working. So I doubt these are gonna be much better, but I'll give them a go. I'm gonna not even bother with this first set where they were printed flat. I'll just try these second set and see how we get on. So let's switch to Look Kio. So the Look Kio cleats are on, and this time, rather than aluminium pedals, um, these standard Shimano aluminium ones, I've got these these ones here from a company called Exustar. These are plastic, so glass fiber reinforced plastic for the pedal. And the release tension is set really, really low to give them the best chance of succeeding. I'm not holding out much hope, but let's give it a go. Can we even clip in? Oh, there's one. And two, oh, we're clipped in. Once again, just as good as the originals. If I pull up, oh dear. Yeah, <laughs> that's completely cracked off. Let's try to see if we can snap the other one. Uh, yeah, there we go. So both of those, <laughs> both of those have gone. So yeah, those have both failed in <laughs> exactly the same way, just snapped off the front there. Yeah, all in all, this is not looking like a promising project. So the, the last one to try is this Time Expresso cleat here. Now for one, I'm pretty confident they'll fail in exactly the same way as all the other ones here. But secondly, I'll see if I can show you. This is the real cleat here, and there's a little recess at the back for this uh, for this for this clip. That's kind of recessed there. It's not on the print file, so that's a bit of a problem. And it basically means that when you put it into a time pedal, like so, it doesn't set off the, the eye click, the like little clip at the back, which holds it in place. So essentially this cleat wouldn't work anyway, even if the layer delamination problem <laughs> wasn't, wasn't an issue. So these things are a fail as well. So all in all, if you're looking to save yourself a bit of cash and print, print your cleats rather than buying the real thing, yeah, not recommended. Now, having said that, I know there are certain 3D printing filaments that you can get that are embedded with with fibers like glass fiber or even carbon fiber actually and they're supposed to be a lot stronger than the regular pla that was used to print these uh <laughs> these cleats here so if you want to see me give that a go let me know i'm not sure the 3d printer that i've got access to has high enough nozzle temperatures to handle that type of filament um because i think you need really high really hot nozzles where, where it's extruded. But yeah, if you do want to see that, uh, let me know. Maybe I can try and give that a go. But all in all, this particular project was a complete unmitigated failure. Anyway, uh, subscribe if, if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this project, even though it was a complete disaster. <laughs> if you do want to check out some uh, decent cycle gear, yeah, my sponsor Sirocco do some wicked stuff, so I'll put the link in the description. Anyway, um, that's it. See you next time. Ciao. Also, very quickly, look at my wall. So yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with this actually. I did this a couple of days ago. There was a bike here, for those that remember, mounted to the wall, but I always wanted to get all the tools and stuff out of my cupboards and get them sort of easier to access and put them up here. I did look at pegboard for this particular application, but it's quite expensive for what it is, especially if you want something this large. So in the end, I just went with some sheets of MDF, mounted them to the wall, and then I can just kind of hammer in some nails to get everything sort of in its place. Maybe if you want to see exactly how I did this and maybe a bit of a workshop tour as well, let me know and I'll, I'll take you through it. But it definitely appeals to my slightly neurotic brain to have everything sort of <laughs> tidied away into these nice little drawers. Um, but there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Ciao.